Good evening! Hope you're all doing well. Let's see what's going on. Mouse working. So far so good. Good evening to Darius and Jason, Median and Mini Lisper and Pom Pimp and Rohalabal. Oh, that's not even close. Rohalaf. And uh, Shimera. Sorry about the, getting the names wrong. And good evening. Today, let's just see what's going on. All right. Audio, video, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, will we be doing some PHP? Only PHP. The P stands for parens. Um, so I think the guy who raids with PHP is now streaming. Awesome. He's fantastic. He does so much streaming. It's really impressive. Um, all right. Let's settle in. Okay, so we are going to carry on with this series of us slowly trying to muddle together a GPU um, culling implementation. Um, one thing, I haven't watched this yet. But I did see it come up the other day. Apparently, Enfiano is doing a games programming stream. So if you're interested in that, in less, but you should definitely go check that out. I'd love to hear how it's going. Um, I was expecting it would be going much faster than this because it's an actual focused thing on making a game, as I understand. And it was doing loads of episodes. It was really impressive. So I will hopefully catch up with that at some point. But until then, more screwing around with this mess. Okay, so we are trying to implement... GPU culling, last time we left off, we had some rather worrying things. We had to, let me just bring up the compute stuff we were doing. Okay, so we'd, we'd ported this compute shader over that apparently will let us, uh, will actually do the meat of the culling. We haven't gone through that in detail yet. We know it's not working properly, um, but it is doing something. So what's happening here is we run this function, it runs the compute shader, and then we're making a fence so we know it's safe to pull, and then we're pulling um, the counts, like how much stuff has been written out. Um, so basically, the number of things that are going to be drawn, that were, that were not culled. And it's all of them, 1,000. So clearly we haven't done any culling, which is a problem. But another thing we need to do, uh, once we've got the data culled, is to actually render the result. So what I thought we'd do is this week, let's just pretend that this was working and all of these were meant to be drawn to the screen. Let's do the indirect rendering bit and just see if we can get something up. So, if we jump over to base. Oops, not there. Let's do this and this. This is what we need it to roughly draw. This is the data we put in the first place. We draw a thousand instances of this. And um, we render them to a depth buffer. And then we do all the transformations on that. And, and hopefully we're able to use the compute then to using this information but what we'd like to do actually is take the data we've written out of our compute shader and um, dispatch the draw call for all of the things that it's drawing which should be all of these yes when we last uh, when we left off last time we we're having some interesting problems though because when we wrote let's jump back to compute again when we wrote out to do 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 Occluder output, I think, was the one. Let's have a look. Yes, when we wrote to occluder output, and we and we uh, did pull G on it, something rather nasty was happening. We were getting we were getting all the um, a thousand ma like matrix fours that we were expecting, but the layout was all strange. Um, instead of seeing these ones in regular places, basically these are all um, very simple trans translation matrices. So they all have the same kind of layout. The three values that represent the translation and then a standard kind of identity matrixy kind of thing going on. But they were all strided strangely and all this kind of stuff. I wasn't sure what was going on. Uh, but then we pulled it down and we messed around with CFFI to look at the values and we saw that they were laid out correctly. So getting it down from the GPU was fine. Um, what it, the GPU was writing was fine. It was something to do with pull G. Now, what it turned out to be was, surprise, surprise, bug in Keppel, of course, but, um, yeah, let's just go and have a look at it, actually, because I found it fun. Um, let's have a look at the works. Keppel core uh, types layout, and then call matrix layout. There we go. Okay, so there's these. When you look at uh, GL's layouting roles, um, you find clauses like this, clause five. If the member is a column major uh, matrix with C rows and R columns, the matrix is sort identically to an array of a C of C column vectors with R components each, according to rule four. So, 
what I was doing then was I was being lazy in this code and I'm just saying, okay, if it's identical, let's just use, um, let's just make a layout specifier instead of for an array of matrices, which is actually what we had. Where was it? Array of, can't recall right now. Yeah, instead of, instead of for a matrix, let's just do the layout for four vectors. And we dispatch this off, and it gets us the right layout size-wise. Um, but we also store some metadata for uses elsewhere in Keppel, and that was incorrect, because then it was saying, hey, this is an array of vectors, not this is a matrix four. So then when our code, that, like when we defined structs, was working how to download things to unpack things back into Lisp, it had all the wrong information. It's like, oh, this is... This is, um, what is it, like the element size was 16 instead of um, 64. And so it was just, yeah, completely wrong. So that was it. It came down to some bugs around here. And I, I fixed them a couple of hours after the stream. And it was, um, yeah, that one's actually pretty easy. But so we are back in business now. So as you saw, when we pulled this down, this is populated with loads of what we assume to be correct um translation matrices, and I'm pretty confident that that is correct. So we're gonna use that to drive the layout. Now, if we are going to drive rendering from the GPU, we're gonna be using indirect rendering, which is something we added, a feature we added, actually, at least mostly designed on stream. So we are going to be digging into that. And before I do that, I wanna check the chat, and then we will, we will kind of dive in. Jason saying, I'm trying to coax Keppel SDL2 into running on the kernel frame buffer. It's going interesting. SDL cam, SDRM backend seems broken, but I can't tell for sure. Oh, um, we could probably fix that up again. Cyborg saying, nice t-shirt. Yes. I, it's so bad. I haven't actually watched past season five. Um, I've been saying that for about a year. I, I was so glad when Avenge Time finished because it made me a lot more interested in, uh, in watching the rest. Oh man, that's gonna be cool. There's so many things I've got to watch, like Dark Crystal's out now, and then there's another film that I got excited about the other day, and oh man, it's dope. Oh yeah, Sea Midsummer. that's a good film. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but yeah, rough. Um, okay, aside from that, let's have a think about rendering. Um, and the way this is done, this is going to be a very jump around the Keppel source code kind of episode, because we haven't done much with indirect rendering yet, and it shows. Like, there's not much um, abstraction over it. There's not much, not any helpers. In fact, we're going to make some helpers in this episode, I think. Um, let's have a look, actually. I do have an example from the Keppel test suite. So this, I wonder if we can load up. I wonder if Keppel tests are already loaded. No, okay, right, so let's abort that. Uh, oops, let's play. Let's, um, what happens if we load Keppel test? Is that going to be okay with it? Should be. Five AM, blah, 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 blah. There'll be one failing test because it's a, a feature that, this is the first test of another feature I'm working on for layered rendering. Um, but this test ran and we're going to talk about it. So what happens is we make a stream um, with data for a triangle. All right, and then we also make an array for transform feedback. This these tests are actually for trans for the transform feedback feature, so it's writing out of the vertex stage and back to CPU memory essentially. Um, well, back out of vertex stage into a buffer. Um, okay, so we make an array here that we're going to to write. Um, yeah, the, write the transform feedback into. We make a pipeline that we can see all it does is it takes the position that's coming in here, one of these guys, and pushes it into feedback. And so it's gonna push three per triangle. And as we're gonna see, we're gonna, dip, we're gonna draw, I think two triangles, we'll see that in a minute. Okay, so then we come down here and we have a draw array. So yes, we are we're actually gonna draw two triangles, I think. So we make a GPU array it has this type array indirect command, which I jump to is this. Now this struct is defined by um, in the indirect drawing in GL. So 
they have which which one's this multi draw elements indirect i think that's what we're what are we using oops my oh we're doing arrays indirect so draw arrays indirect there we go so we can see the struct has a count, an instance count, a first and a base instance, and they're all uints, and that's what we're seeing here. So this is the this is the information required to make one draw call. And this would be populated on the GPU. It's going to be populated by our compute shader. And then what we can do is make a single call on the CPU side saying, hey, using the commands that are in that buffer, render stuff. And this is, becomes really useful either when you want to set up draw calls on the GPU, but you don't want to have to then copy that data down just to submit it again. Um, or if you want to, yeah, like use the GPU to make tons of draw calls, like hundreds of thousands of draw calls, but you could never afford the overhead of sending all those draw calls over, um, yeah, over the interconnect between CPU side and GPU. So it's a really cool feature. But as we're going to see, like normally we don't have to worry about base instance or um, instance count or pretty much any of this stuff or the first in this case the first byte of the yeah the byte in the indices array where the data starts stuff like this this is stuff that Keppel hides away oh, yeah. also an interesting design note when you make abstractions people don't learn stuff you I mean when you even if it's a good abstraction, even if you hide away something that is needlessly complex, they now know, don't know the complex thing. So if it's exposed somewhere else, you confuse the hell out of them because they've never seen it before. And that's where we are with this. We don't normally mess with this stuff because it's all the code to handle it is simple and it's written by Keppel. So yeah, that's going to be interesting. So we've got to make some helpers for working with this and we will get to that. But anyway, it makes this array of what is going to be two draw calls. Um, we make a transform feedback stream. This is just so that we like we need to be able to tell um, tell the GPU where to um, stream the data back into. That's done with this transform feedback stream. We have a query stream, uh, which is we want to know um, we want to test. Uh, this tells you how many things were written into this stream. Um, and then what do we do? Da, da, da. then we are going to populate those two draw calls. So here is us setting arrays indirect command count first base instance instance count with some values. And this is the first element of that array. And this is the second element of that array. Um, as you can see, not pretty, especially not in Lisp. Um, and then we can see we're going to use this GPU query. We're going to use transform feedback. And then we are going to multi-map G. Instead of map G, we're doing multi-map G, which says, hey, we're going to do multiple draw calls, and you're going to take those draw calls from here, this draw array. And then pipeline and the stream of vertices are the same as they normally are. So we're drawing with this pipeline, yeah, this stuff. And then it checks to see that two things were actually written out to the um, transform feedback. But the important thing here is the fact that we can make draw calls in a GPU array and dispatch them. So we're going to start from here, which is ugly, and we're going to see if we can make any helpers to make all this easier, because this is already, it's difficult even to say, let alone to follow along with. Um, Cyberk saying, um, Cybersky, Cybersky? Why not? Uh, man, so excited for Dark Crystal, that movie scared the poop out of me as a child. It was so good. It's so good. It's one of those ones I just watch every year or so. It's like, it's great. Is the current code pushed? I think so. This is Keppel. Uh, that's not going to... Oh, no, it's Keppel test. Go away. Um, that's also Keppel, Chris. Jesus Christ, come on. Sort your shit out. Um, yes. This is just the screwing around we did a second ago. On episode 79, you'll find the latest. And for me, I was able to just do play start and it worked. So if you're following along at home, that should be cool. Um, okay, so let's look at a few things. We're going to have to look at multi-draw. And I was doing a little bit of work before the stream start to try and think of something we can do to help us because um, it's really... Like some of these values are things that could be filled in for us because it's mainly the stuff that says, hey... Um, 
given um, this, given these vertices, given these indices, given this layout, some of these are just describing that stuff. And we can, we know that on the CPU side. So why don't we just use, we make some helpers to populate that. Not doing a very good job of explaining it, but, um, so I went into the um, code for def pipeline. Let's bring something up. Let's, uh, what is something we could do here? Um, let's go to render. Def pipeline, let's do this one, sir. Simple enough, simple enough. It's funny, this is gonna look terrible. Um, yeah, when def pipeline expands, it does a whole bunch, writes a whole bunch of code. In here somewhere is the gl draw, where is it? Yes, draw arrays instance, that would be the thing it's using, or draw elements instance, and things like this. If I jump to the, uh, don't expect you to follow along with that code, it's just showing that it's in there. Um, draw elements instance, okay. So if I go in here, um, I can find some of the code it's going to do on draw. So one, some of the stuff it checks. It goes, okay, if you've passed in an array of, um, a draw array, which is one of those indirect uh, things, then we need to use multi-draw elements or multi-draw arrays indirect. We're not doing that yet. We're populating some buffers. So we're, not, we're going to ignore this. The other case, if you're not doing that, is that... Um, you're doing a normal kind of rendering and you're either going to be using draw um, elements instance or you're going to be using draw arrays instance. Um, so I took this code from here to here. Um, I copied it out. I removed a couple of declares and that's what I have dumped here. And then I removed the call and I was just looking at, actually, let's just do it again because it won't take, won't take more than a second to do. So let's go back here. So I dumped this code in. I went, all right, that's interesting. Uh, we'll get rid of these declares because we're not interested in those right now. So these are the two calls. Um, and given a buffer stream, which we work with a lot in Kaggle, um, we extract some stuff, some useful stuff. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's look at draw arrays first and see how it relates to um, arrays indirect command. In fact, I'm going to swap these two around just so it's in the same order. Draw arrays, draw elements. Draw arrays, draw elements. So we need account and instance count first, whatever that is, and base instance. So let's see if we can populate any of that stuff. So if we go to draw arrays instance, we can see, actually I'm gonna bring that back up again. Um, we can see that I don't have um, tooltips turn on or whatever they are, the uh, autocomplete stuff down here. So. Draw arrays instance takes a mode, a first account, and an instance count. Okay, so we've got some good things here. Mode isn't related up here, but we do need first and count. So that's first and count. Um, so that's these. Um, well, it's and and there's instance count, which is down here as well. So we're going to have. Um, yeah, so we're gonna, basically we're going to need these three things. These are three things that Keppel can fill in for us, basically. Um, instance count will just take from the normal way that works. Or we suppose it will actually help to be able to provide that as well. So we'll probably do that. Um, and then I did a similar thing for this one. It's just kind of looking at it and going, okay, what things, what arguments does it already take? Because remember, these structs are basically just the information for these draw calls. Um, or a subset of it anyway. So we're looking for count and instance count and first index and base vertex and base in index. Um, in here we can see that we do have count. We do have um, instance count. We do have base vertex. We don't have base instance, um, which is interesting. And we don't have whatever this first index thing is. But when I looked up um, this, this is where things get like just soupy and dealing with GL. They said, hey, you know, this thing's really easy. You use this struct, which is the one we've just been looking at, and it's just the same as calling GL draw elements instance base vertex base instance. Um, and passing in these values. And I'm like, okay, so, so uh, this is this is the first index bit. Um, so I guess we need to work out, yeah, what that is. Uh, 
so that, that's this is interesting this is where I need to see if I actually got this right so this is whatever the argument that goes here divided by size of type I know this is multiply but if that's what this function takes and this is the bit that's described here then to get this value would be whatever this total is whatever I normally pass in for this drawing divided by size of type so yeah I mean it's obviously uh, let's, so let's have a look I can come back to this I think I've actually just learned something else as well which is good right so if I go and look up this function we can see holy shit it's got a long name still um, and it's the same it's helpfully defined in the terms of oh this one's easy too it's identical to this one so just go look up that great um, so I had a look at which command we're using which is draw elements instance based vertex which is nearly this so I should just go and look up our one as well um, and then I had a look around to see how similar these two were and where they differed now the argument that's being passed in is this fourth argument here and the fourth argument here is indices cool so this is a pointer to the location where the indices are stored in fact what it actually takes is a byte offset into the GPU array um, but that's documented elsewhere because GL documentation is like that but we can see that the fourth argument to this one that we do call a lot is the same so whatever we pass in normally is related to what we need to be writing into first index okay so what do we normally write in there what we normally write is this this is the fourth one one two three four we have this hidden field in the stream struct which um, says which byte is the first one um, now then I was thinking oh goody I can just use that for first index and I even wrote it down here but that's incorrect what we need is the the index of the first like yeah the first index oh, this is really annoying the the index into the indices array that where we want to start cool so whatever this uh, byte thing is calculated from we need to look at that so let's just jump there and see um, da, 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 da. that's interesting um, so it's not set directly it's set the result of something else um, so it's related to this uh, you can see here it's set by some value times type size now that lines up exactly with this some value first index apparently times type size so if we have a look at what this value is what are we setting we are setting the buffer stream start so if we just grab the buffer stream start that should actually be the value we need so that would have been a mistake so let's go and take this go back here and instead of uh, buffer stream start byte we're just going to use buffer stream start which is a public function for lack of a better term an exported symbol um, so this should be the thing so the values that need to go into into these structs I've got my little summary down here of the here's one I baked earlier kind of job for the um, arrays indirect we can from the stream we can get the buffer stream length which is great from instance count we need to provide that or we can just get it from um, that's in a, a what is it a um, dynamic variable um, I think let's, uh, can we just get that in the REPL let's have a look instance ca oh no instance no uh, instance oh that's interesting current let's look at capital instance Oh, that's interesting. We can't just query that. That's kind of a shame. I would want that. We'll have to add a function to do that as well. Okay. Um, but yes, we'll take the one from the current context or we will um, have a way to provide our own directly. So explicit or implicitly provided. That one will be this one's taken from the stream. This one's taken from the stream. Then we need to work out what base instance is. Um, and I'll just say as kind of spoiler, we can leave this as zero for now. It's one of those things that you know when you need it, kind of thing. So we're going to leave that for now. 
Um, so that is going to be user specified. And then we come down here and the things we found out. Buffer stream length um, is going to uh, be used to populate count. Instance count, the same as before. Buffer stream start is what we just found out was for first index uh, based vertex is already defined in the stream. And once again, we base instance will get the user to provide or say zero. So that's neat. Um, it would be good to be able to get this data out of the stream and put it somewhere we can easily get to the GPU. So this is what I want to do. Let's, um, I want to write a few helper functions. and I'm going to do that now. We're going to have um, make draw command C array, which is going to take a length. And this is just going to return a C array um, of the correct type. Oh, actually, we will need to pass in the stream as well. Because remember up here, we've got two different types um, that it could be either an elements indirect or an array is indirect. And that information we normally don't have to worry about because it's baked into streams. So we will do that. We will pass in a stream and a length. And this is going to either return a C array in this case or a GPU array in this case. So let's just do that now. Um, let's go. I'm going to use defn. I'm going to make this full screen for now as well. Um, I'm going to add some types, buffer, stream, and length is going to be, and I can't remember what I used for this, gl, um, let's have a look actually, let's if I go to Keppel core types, and then uh, Keppel types, we've got a bunch of predefined types up here I use quite a bit. Um, C array index, that's what I'm going to use for length. Okay, so that's going to be um, the required types going in, and it is going to return a C array. And now we just need to make that. So it's going to be make C array, and I am going to check on the chat real soon. Initial contents are going to be nil. The dimensions are going to be length. Uh, the element type is going to be based on something else. So I'm going to a lot of at symbols just because um, they show up light blue in my editor and it's kind of handy and row alignment will leave so that's the bit we have to work out now actually which is good so let's element type um, is going to depend on if we're doing draw elements or draw arrays and we can see what the condition is if the index type um, from the stream, in this case I just remember it's from the stream, is zero, then it's draw arrays. So let's just do this. So let's go if, now how do we get the index type from a buffer stream? Let's just jump to there and see what the index type. Okay, so it's one of these. I am guess it's gonna be the enum. Um, I will go and check with some other code. Like I said, this is gonna be a jumping through all kinds of crap kind of stuff today equals index type. So let's go see where index type is defined. Um, index type is from this. So we take a buffer stream, index type enum, yeah. And if that is equal to zero, then, let's just move this down to a new line, then we are going to be using this type, otherwise we're going to be using this type. Okay, so that's going to be our element type, and we can just go and write that element type. And it says the assertion is too complex to check that C array value C array and rest T. Okay, so there's something a little bit up there. What doesn't it like? If I just say this is T, it goes away. If this is C array, it can't resolve it. So it's saying that it's not sure if this is returning a C array, which is odd. Ah, it can't. Oh, right, okay. So it's just that. Because there's no type information defined for this function, that it's not able to guarantee it. Well, that's interesting. Um, but I know that that is actually the case here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to defn for now, and I'm going to say that this 
definitely returns a C array. And I'm going to allow all these other things to be of type T. Now, how does that work with keyword arguments? I cannot remember. This is, again, Defin is a macro I've defined myself for just helping with writing, uh, yeah, writing um, already typed CL code. Uh, let's see what happens if I just do this. So here is the type, and it's saying that the row alignment type is one, which is incorrect. So let's do this. Does that, I'm trying to remember what the syntax is for this. No. Okay, so now we can see that the dimensions, element type, and row type are all defined to be T. The return type is defined to be C array. And we can see that the normal defund that's been defined by the macro has dimensions nil, element type nil, row alignment one, which is correct. So when we compile this, it doesn't complain, and we go back here, and now it's happy with the types, which is fine. Um, let's have a look. So we're getting good links being brought up by Pomdapimp. If you want to try and go through that GL documentation, it is not amazingly fun. <laughs> Uncle Bugsy's saying, holy shit, Baggers lost a fight with some hair clippers. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Yep, that's it. You know, I tried. I put up a, I just, I swung at it, but it was quite sharp. Um, <laughs> Siluina is just recommending fucking up features for some reason. I mean, if it's cool, if you're causing pain to your own machine, that's great. Okay, so we've made a command C array. Let's just test this out. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to, what are we going to do? What is any of this? Um, let's go back to Keppel and package. Um, and where is this from? We need to export this. Uh, it's from Keppel pipelines. Keppel dot pipelines. And we may as well put the other ones in there as well. So there's going to be GPU array and there's going to be um, set draw command. I'm pretty sure I want it to be called that. Let's just go with it for now. We can always change it. Not hard to do. Okay, so let's do make draw command C array. Nice. And then we're going to pass in a stream and a length. So I'm going to say, I need a stream. Let's look at compute foo. What stream were we passing in here? Were we passing in a stream? No, of course not, because we were doing compute. Don't be daft. Okay, let's go back to base and see what stream we were using for all the other things. Um, okay, there was a stream inside our mesh. Let's do this. Bam. B stream, that's for our sphere. And then we're going to say, hey, we want 10 draw commands. And what we get is a C array of length 10, where the element type is elements indirect, which makes sense because B stream, if we have a look at it, Well, we can see from right here, it's indexed. And if it's indexed, then we're using um, elements indirect and not arrays indirect. So we're, we're, already, we're already on a roll. So that's good. Cool, so that's the first one. Um, we're gonna do, we're just gonna copy this. And we're gonna say GPU array. Um, and we are going to just change this make C to make GPU and everything's fine, I think. Definitely. It's saying it's too, oh yes, yeah, too complex to check because GPU array. Ah. Oh, this will be slightly different. So this is gonna be a buffer backed GPU array this is returning. And again, it's not able to, oh no. The assertion is too complex to check. Well, let's go and have a look at make GPU array. So I'm pretty sure it's the same, ah. Well, it is a method. All right, well, I could be lazy for now because I'm just thinking, can we, what's the deal with types on methods? I'm not actually sure of the drill on that and I don't want to be caught out. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, just turn this to a defund. We'll even make it a little bit slower and just do check type in here as well. Check type of stream is buffer stream. Check type of 
length. The CRA index. Why not? Just for now. Oh, yeah, that's not going to be correct because this is now illegal. And what did I do wrong? Assignment to argument stream prevents use of assertion from function type. Ooh. Oh, okay. Assignment to argument stream. Assignment to argument stream prevents use of assertion from function type pro proclamation. That's interesting. Assignment to argument length. I didn't know anything was assigning to those things, but sure, okay. Um, but what we can do is, if we inspect this, how do we get rid of declarations that have already been made? If we unbind the function, that will probably get rid of any declarations and we can recompile it and it's now got no warnings. Hooray, good. Okay, so that was the answer. Um, so we've done make, G make draw command C array, make draw command GPU array. Now we want to be able to set an element in the C array. So this is going to be useful if you're populating the whole thing from the GPU side. Um, this is going to be useful if you want to do some things locally and then push it. The other way you could actually do it is make the GPU array version and then use with GPU array as C array and then use this function. We're going to see what this function is now. Let's go up here. Actually, let's... Yeah, I'm going to go up here and paste it. And let's get it written. Okay, so, defin. Set draw command with all of these arguments. Um, C array is a C array. And index is, I can't remember, we'll see soon. Um, stream is a buffer stream. And then we're going to have two optional arguments. Base instance, which is going to be, um, I don't know right now. Uh, let's just go with that um, C array index and instance count can also be that. I'll have to see what I actually use for those types elsewhere. Um, and then the return type is going to be, what should the return type be? Normally when you have a set function it's the value that you put in which is the return type. But the values where, I suppose the stream might be the best thing to do. Let's say we're going to return the stream. And so stream will be the final thing we return. And we're going to set some values in the C array. Now what's this index though? I dumped this here for some reason. Oh yeah, okay. So we want to... We're passing in a C array and we want to write to one of the elements of that C array. Um, we're going to take the data from this stream and push it into this C array at this index. Cool. And again, we want to do... Um, what's going on over here? Um, check type will reassign on the set value restart. Ooh, that's a good bit of information. That's really cool. Uh, store value and you can definitely set the f type of a generic function i don't know that you can f type an individual method uh, but i see that getting really hairy uh, that ha getting hairy really quick but an f type on a generic function for declaiming the return value seems reasonable enough it does actually doesn't it should we do it let's do it let's get it done okay right uh make gpu array so this one boop um let's go to the definition which is here um what is all this Wow, these to-dos are ancient. Let's see all the data we need. Ooh, that's a useful to-do. Um, not much need checking for sanity. I'm clearly don't have any. Yes. Wow, that is a long time ago. Okay, so we're going to declaim. Um, let's have a look at the what we would want the type to be. Ah, so this is interesting. We use at key and then we just say, hey, there are other arguments. So how do we type that given that different methods have different keyword arguments? Can we do the same thing? Can we do, um, whoops. Can we do declaim f type make GPU array, which is no, not that, yeah, we're going to put that there. Um, function 
initial contents, which is going to be T and key, and then we say GPU array BB. Maybe. What does this do when we try and compile it? Oh, well, it doesn't complain. Oops, that's not how you get to the hyperspec. D, H, there we go. F type. Specifies the functions named by function names of the, of the functional type type. For example, bloop. One of the functions has. Da, 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 what does it say about function types? Oh, I'm just going to the same page. Um, it can be free declarations, bound declarations. Okay, cool. Um, let's have a look. How do we get... Let's learn about function types. Where do we talk about types? Types and classes. Let's have a look. Types. Type specifiers. And then we want to know about function types. Um, maybe it's just down there under function. Let's have a look. Function. Boop. Um... Not the special operator, not the symbol, maybe the system class. Function, arg type spec, value type spec. Here we go. And it says the keyword type spec is star, so we don't have to specify any of them. But is that correct? <laughs> that's the bit that's interesting. So let's have a look at key. At key. Okay, the at optional, at rest, at key, and allow other keys markers can appear in the list of argument types. The type specifier provided with at rest. The at key parameters should be supplied as lists of the form keyword type. The keyword must be a value, valid keyword. Da, 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 da. When key is given in a function type specifier lambda list, the keyword parameters are given exhaustive, given are exhaustive unless allow other keys is also present. That's cool. So I think, I think we do this. That's how I'm reading that anyway. Is there anything else we need to know about at key? The only other thing I did specify see in type was just generic function. Yeah, generic function isn't used in type signatures. That's cool. That's all right. Okay, so let's go with that. That looks like it could be a thing. And let's go and just make sure that all of these actually do return what I think they return. Um, there's some complexity here with FGL context, but... Um, pre is a uninitialized GPU array BB. Okay, yes. So that is a buffer back GPU array. Um, same deal here. Buffer back GPU array. And same here, buffer back GPU array. Okay, that's cool. So I'm happy that that's always going to return. If it succeeds, it's going to return a buffer back GPU array. And so that type is valid. So that means we can then go back to multi draw. We can go into this one and we can we just see if we've still got all the undo information for this. It looks likely. No, oh, what? Boo. Why don't you know the thing? Inspect. That is not how you inspect that. Inspect like this. Um, it's a function. It's got a lot of documentation. 
Um, yeah, that's the documentation. But what have we got as far as type stuff is concerned? It's not super clear. I guess it's not really something that uh, like you can rely on because I mean methods it's quite valid I mean it's it's valid to be redefining that stuff um, Zuluino says I think that's a right F type function T and rest T oh wait a second then I think you're right did I cover that up Oh yeah, function t. You said and rest t, and key allowed. Okay, let's have a look at that. Yeah, I don't think this is ever actually going to be satisfied. And I think that's all right to be honest. It's not a big deal. So let's um. Yeah, there's no real advantage to doing this. Let's uh, let's drop it back for now. Unless you have any good ideas, I'm going to leave it like this, I think. Whoops. Oh, what have I done now? Oh, of course, same issue as before. Inspect. Go in, unbind that function, recompile this, everything's happy. And then we'll get back to what we're meant to be doing, which is this set draw command. Okay, so... It really depends, once again, on the element type here. So we want to go, uh, basically we just want this if. Bam, bam, bam. We're gonna take this, drop it in here. If the enum type is zero. And we don't actually store the index type as a as Lisp information because it's just slower. Like w when we need it, we're passing it to, um, passing it to GL. And then we want, actually want the enum itself to be passing so to pass rather than having like enum to um enum transforms in cffi are slow like understandably you're doing a lookup into some dictionary uh, so it has to get the dictionary and then it has to do the lookup and if you're doing that every frame lots of times like i was in the past it gets pretty nasty so we try and calculate all the enum values ahead of time and then call the functions directly and everything gets a bit better so what do we need now? We need to do, um, we need to calculate the correct values. So we're basically just gonna have set f here with a bunch of stuff. Yeah, let's just put a prog in here and a prog in here. And hello, um, JSATK. Sorry for the distraction rabbit holes everywhere. Totally, man. Like the, this whole stream today, yeah, I'm already going off on all kinds of little tangents. But we will get some features added and we will get some stuff done. So I'm going to take this nonsense. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to take this first and we're going to dump it here. And we're going to jiggle this around until it's real code. Um, jiggle, jiggle. Right, okay. So um, how are we going to do this? Let's get rid of this value stuff. Um, this is going to be a set f, and then it's whatever this is. And let's just um, oh, that was surprising. I thought that should have jumped to the end. Yeah, they did that time. Cool. I must have done it wrong. Okay, so these are the values. Now we need to work out where we're shoving this data. So that is going to be the um, So let element is um, ARFC. We need to get the element at this index. So we'll go and do that from our C array index. Good. And then we need to know where we're shoving this information. So let's have a look at this. Arrays, index, indirect command, count, blah, 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 blah. So let's do this. We'll do set f, highlight all the set f's. We will just go and get rid of that 
Um, we'll put these prones around here. We'll do this. That should now be the um, correct function name. And we do lm, and I think that's it. So that's indirect command count. Instance count, first, base instance, good. So now we still don't know what base instance and in instance count are. And actually, what is this going to be? Yeah, I will leave that there for now. I'm thinking about just uh, whether we could we could, we should move this up to the top level, but the types will be a little better if we leave it here. But let's look at some other things. We want to know the instance count, and that mean, means we need a way of getting it. We don't have that at the moment, so let's go and have a peek inside the Keppel context to see where that is defined. Instance count is in there. So how do we get the instance count out of the Keppel context? Let's go and find it. Um, all right. So there is a. We're just screwing around with all kinds of internal stuff today. Um, let's have a look. Cool context. Keppel context. There's the types. Okay, so I'm expecting that it's defined in here. There's the big struct. There's the Keppel context with all the shit we cache. Nasty. Okay, so. Um, instance count. Let's grep around for that. Oh, actually, I know where that will be read in some semi sensible way. <laughs> Maybe. Um, is in pipelines, def pipeline. So in here somewhere. There has to be instance count. Oh, there it is. Okay. That's the function to get it. So I'm going to just use that same one. It's not pretty, but it is correct. So, um, where's our multi map file again? Multi draw. That's the one. Um, instance count is either going to be one that someone passes in or this. So, or instance count this. Um, Let's just jump to this and actually see what the type was. It was C array indexed, excellent. So that is the correct one to be using for this argument. Groovy, let's put that around. And now the next thing is base instance. So what we're gonna do here is we can say base instance is, oh, actually, let's just double check the type signature from this function is not ready to do that yet, okay. Where's comma being used? What the hell? Oh, yeah, I've left a comma in there. Whoops. Um, and this should be the context, which is going to be... Hmm. Normally I use the with Keppel context macro for reasons. So let's just do that as well. And I think base instance is going to be base instance or zero. So let's just compile that. And it freaks the fuck out. Okay, because it's not happy about the derived type of stream. Um, yes, because the type isn't stream. It's buffer stream. And it's complaining about an unknown variable down here, which is base instance, which we have actually defined now. So that's good so far. <laughs> okay, so what next? Well, we're gonna have to do the same for the other one. But is there anything we're missing? Oh yeah, it's one thing I wanted to check was if I just expand this and look at the types and make sure I understand this correctly. Yes, it's an optional or C array null. That makes sense. Um, C array index or null. C array index or null. That's good because we're checking when we're using or here. This suggests that whatever this value is is either a number or null. So I wanted to make sure that these types were reflecting that correctly, um, and I was pretty sure that the macro handled that. Okay, so what now? Now we have to do other stuff. Now we have to do the same thing down here. Um, so it's all the ones for this count, instance count, first index, base vertex, base instance. Cool, this is the name of the type. 
Let's go and do some multi-cursor stuff again. We jump past that. Uh, in fact, let's do this. Let's do set F. Jump past. Knock that down to a new line up there. Um, then we can go to the end. Elm. We haven't defined Elm yet, but we will. Um, let's go up here. Um, let's just go up and get that let. There's that. Okay, so that should com that compiles now. That should be it. That should allow us to have populated, yeah, to populate a bunch of the data automatically without having to know too much. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. So, what did we do before? We we had a buffer stream. Okay, let's take this buffer stream and just shove it in temporary variables. So def var uh, temp zero is that. So we got temp zero. There's our buffer stream. Now we're going to do make. Now what was it called? There it is. Make draw command uh, C array. Taking temp and it's going to have 10 elements and doesn't know what temp is, which makes sense. I've just said abort. Def var temp one of that. Right, let's just uh, go and start that up again because I like having that in the corner. It's comforting. All right, so temp zero is our buffer stream. Temp one is our C array that was made, that got this type based on some data from buffer stream. Now let's go and set some elements in it. Um, that's interesting, actually. Is that the right thing to do? I don't know. We'll see. Um, set draw command. We're going to pass in our temp1, which is our C array. Index, which is going to be 0. Stream, which is going to be that buffer stream we started with, temp0. And then we're just going to leave the other things to their defaults. And it returns the buffer stream. Actually, that's a good point. Do we want it to return the buffer stream? Because what we're actually working on is the C array. And it seems like we would have a few of these. Like if we were doing a reduce over it, taking a list of things to populate, then that seems like the wrong thing to return. So I actually want to change this out. Instead of buffer stream, I want this to be C array. C array. And it's going to complain about types changing. That's fine. Um, and now let's do the same thing at index 1, and then we're just going to do pull g from that array. And we can see that the first two, I mean there's a lot of garbage here, but the first two things are mostly the same except the last value. What the fuck did we not do there? Base instance. Base instance. uint. What the fuck? Base instance. Elm. We set it to base instance, and base instance is either whatever we passed in, or zero. I'm missing something here. I bet we just found more bugs in Keppel, but that is... Oh wait, is that correct? Arrays, yes. Elements, yes. If the enum is zero, then we're not using indices, we're not using index rendering. Um, it's one of those things as well A um, now we've made this we made an array right and all of the draw commands inside that array are elements indirect so why would we ever allow anything else to be written in we should actually sanity check that input to make sure you're not passing in a stream which is because you're going to pass in different streams for different um, areas in a GPU uh, buffer, I expect. But they all need to be using in um, element the, the same kind of rendering. God, it's really difficult to speak sometimes. <laughs> all right, so where are we up to? We're nearly up to 10 o'clock. Okay, so we're an hour deep. So I think we've got our helpers almost done. I just don't understand this last bit. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, yeah, right fucking there. One, two, three, four, five. What is going on? Now I've got myself doubting all kinds of things because let's look at CRA pointer of temp1. There it is, there's a pointer. 
Um, let's loop for i below five collect. This is annoying because of those effort, those issues I was having with my layout stuff last week. Now I'm second guessing everything. Um, mem a ref. Uh, there's that pointer. Let's just use that. The type is going to be uint, and the index is going to be i. No, okay, so that's correct. That is definitely the data that's in there. The question is why? Why was it not populated? Set draw command temp1, which is a C array. We have an index. We have a buffer stream. Let's set zero. Let's set one. Let's pull G. And we still have that issue. So let's go and have a look at this and see what we're doing wrong. This is the bit that should have been working. So let's have a look. Our array is temp1, correct? Yes. Let's take temp1. Let's do a ref c of temp1, 0. This gets our elements indirect command uh, appointed. Well, this is a, a wrapper around a pointer, I expect. Yes. Um, not the most efficient thing in the world, but oh well. OK, so we get that. Now what? Okay, so given that, we should be able to call this on it. Wait a second, first index, that's not the one I want. I want to get indirect command base instance, that's the one. God, it's so long. Um, that's the gibberish. And let's set this to zero and get it it's zero so it's like it's just not getting there what a strange thing we've got some weirdy stuff going on here print high print low Interesting. Ooh, what? Well, that's why that isn't being written to. It's on this branch. What the fuck is going on? Okay, so we've got some stuff backwards here. <laughs> that explains that. Um. Why is it taking this branch? Well, it's taking this branch because it thinks that is zero. Temp one, no, temp zero, let's have a look at that. Ah, temp zero is just a regular buffer stream. It's not in, in, in ugh. It's, not, it's not using indices. So that is actually the correct branch for it to be taking, which means the function that made this is wrong. Okay, so we go here, we go, What? Now I'm confused. <sighs> All right. Get back here and let me put the uh, correct thing on it. Keppel dot types, blah, blah, blah. It's zero. I'm doing something really stupid and I don't know what it is. Make draw command C array from temp zero. Oh, now it's correct. I think I hadn't recompiled this in a while. Let's just recompile this whole file and try again. Okay, so do that. Okay. Let's set f temp zero to be that now. 
cool. And let's look at temp one again, which is our, so the old seer, right? Oh, fucking idiot. Okay, I'm getting all confused. Um, so set f temp zero to be. That's helpful. There was something to do with a yes, that B stream. Okay, set f. Set of temp zero to be that, right? And then we're gonna set of temp one to be um, make draw command array from temp zero and ten. Good. Now we've got the fuck is this nonsense? Now it's saying elements. What is going on here? All right. Okay. What were we playing with originally then? I've just royally confused myself. But whatever. Let's keep going. So this buffer stream is indexed, which means this is correct. Good. That is what I would expect. So now, like, temp0 is this index buffer stream, and temp1 is this. Then I should be able to go set the damn thing in index zero and set it in one and I'm getting high on both sides because yeah it's on the right branch which makes sense someone saw what I did I'm sure and they'll be laughing away to themselves but me I'm just confused there we go okay so these are now set up correctly these two are identical the rest of them are gibberish but we're not going to worry about them because we didn't set them so that's correct Now, we can actually get back to work. So the reason we um, don't care about the, like we're not providing the instance count, where is it, set draw command, blah, blah, blah. We can optionally provide a base instance, which we're not gonna do, and an instance count. Um, the reason we're not gonna provide an instance count is that, actually I'm just thinking, should these be around the other way? Because it's more likely that you're gonna set an instance count than a base vertex. I think we should do that. Let's just quickly swap those around. Cool. Right. And bring the signature up again. The reason we're not providing an instance count is that that's the bit that's being populated by our compute shader. So now we need to get this data on the GPU somewhere that it can be written into. Whew. How did I create that stream? You know what, mate? I don't actually know where that other stream, the non-indexed non one, came from. I, I don't know how I done it. If I watch the video again, I'll definitely see myself cocking something up and finding it. But for now, that remains a mystery. Okay, so let's let's get back to... Not the macro expansion. Let's get back to our compute stuff over here. We... We have this atomic add that we do, which is adding up all of the spheres that need to be drawn. This is our instance count. That is the thing that we need to populate in that um, indirect buffery thing. So, we're actually going to do everything here. I think we can do. I think we can do everything we need to do within this function, and that's going to be interesting. Yeah. All right. Okay. So where does it write this to? It writes to oc output, which is this SSBO here. Um, oh no, that's where it's writing. Sorry, that's where it's writing the world matrices. That's not what we're interested in. We're interested in where we're doing these atomic adds, which is count array, which is part of instance counts, which is here instance counts. This right. So instead of that, let's make a second one. Um, what if the element here wasn't uint and it was actually whatever that other type was? Uh, let's look. Temp1. This element's indirect command one. Like this, but lowercase. 
Whoa. Okay, so it's freaking out because... Oh. Attempted to find the GPU struct name instant count 2. Um, failed as... Oh dear. While it was defined to have an SD430 layout, the following slots had different layouts. Yes. Um, it does not have a layout. And that's actually pretty much useless because... No, I think this is okay. Okay, so we we can safely set the layouts of these to be standard 430. Um, it was... Uh, sorry, remembering how to do that. Uh, STD 430. And the reason we can get away with it is the layout is going to be the same, given that it's just a bunch of scalars. That's going to be fine. If there are vectors and things muddled up in here, especially vector 3, I'd be a lot more worried. But I think this is going to be alright. So, we will see. Um, so now that's done. Save multi-draw. Go back to compute food. Oh, Metian, I should probably push this stuff in Keppel for you soon, shouldn't I? Because you won't be able to follow along otherwise. Okay, so now INST2 compiles. Now we've got 10 of these guys. Which is kind of interesting. And we have a thing called INST counts. Let's, should we just temporarily make another one? Yeah, let's do it. Ins counts too. Um, three ins counts two. Set up ins counts. Set up ins counts two. Be an SSBO of type ins counts two. Let's run this. So it's done. Okay, so now ins counts two is an SSBO with an ID of 12, apparently, um, with this type. What do we do with this? We look at the data, we look at the GPU array buffer, and we reallocate it every time. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So now, instead of inst counts, we're going to use inst counts two. That means a clued pass is going to have to change because we're no longer using whatever it is. Inst counts here, we're using inst counts two. We'll get there. We'll get this. We'll look at instance counts, which is used down here. We get the array. And now the element of the array is not going to be the same. The element is element of the array is going to be a struct. So um, it's gonna be a let's just call it draw call. And What do I want to do with this? I'm going to actually use with slots here. With slots, blah, 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 um, of draw call. And which slot do we want? We want something from elements in direct command. We want instance count. That is the one we want to populate. Draw call. We want the instance count slot, and we want an atomic add to it. And then whatever it's been updated to goes into I, and that is used to write, that's where we write the world matrix. Okay, what happens when we compile this? It freaks out! Okay. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. Um... That is a very weird error. Okay. Oh, right, okay. So, oh, no, 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 I was just reading it wrong. Okay, so what it's saying is, hey, we've just had an error in all possible stages. All of these stages, vertex, tessellation, geometry, are all... None of those have GL global invocation ID 
um, defined. That's why they freaked out. Um, but it is available in compute stage. However, in compute stage, the error we had was symbol draw call is unidentified. And that makes perfect sense because we haven't got a let's start here. We compile this and it freaks out for a different reason. And now it's saying slot value could not find a slot name instance count in elements indirect command. That's interesting um, because it definitely has one. But that means something rather unfortunate. That means now Keppel has to export these symbols, which doesn't make me feel particularly shiny. Oh dear, right, so, oh, this is just asking for symbol collisions and shit like that. I don't like it, Sam, I am. Um, oh, why can't I type? Because I'm still me, that's why. Well, first is a CL symbol, so that's not going to be um, not going to be defined. But the rest of them are part of Keppel pipelines, and we're going to have to export them. Ugh. Not particularly great. Is there any other way we could define the syntax so we didn't have to export these? Because with slots is pretty special, right? With slots is saying we are getting a slot from this particular type. So, really, oh man, because uh, you could do ugly things. You could define different slots with different symbol names in different packages. So if you did like this was foo and this was bar, I think that's technically, is that legal? I don't even know if it is actually. But then when you're using with slots, how would that work? That's interesting. I don't know. Let's have some water and have a think. Because what I'm thinking about, sorry, well, before I grab the water, is what if in, um, in Vario we allowed you to do this? Okay, I can think of a reason immediately you're not allowed to do that is because then we would have keyword variable names, which is that. But we could allow you to do like this, where the we'll use the keyword to look up the slot name, and then you have to bind it to something that's not a keyword. It's an extension to the language, but it's one that I think is arguably better than exporting a shit ton of symbols. Ugh, I don't know what to think about that. Okay, so... For now, we're going to have to go and take these. Wait a second, is count? Count really something that's part of this? No, that's external to common list already. Instance count, first index, base vertex, and base instance are all going to have to be exported. Okay, so Keppel package, Keppel.pipelines, pipelines, pipelines. Okay, so that will export those. And then I just need to know how keppel.pipelines is expo exposed in future. So keppel uses keppel.pipelines and it, oh, not that, I'm looking here, and re-exports everything from keppel pipelines. <laughs> okay, so I compiled that and nothing freaked out, so I'm going to go with it for now, but I'm still not happy with it. Um, thoughts in the chat? What should we do? Um, Zilowina is saying, yes, slot names are symbols. So you can have two slots whose symbols have the same name but different packages. Um, in with slots, you can package qualify them. Yeah, but I'd, I'd like to do an extension where you provide maybe just the keyword. Um, in the case where you're binding it to a different name, the original name can be specified by a keyword. And if there aren't two slots which have which a string equal to that name if there isn't more than one slot that is a string equal to that name we know exactly which slot you're talking about and we'll just bind that yeah no it, it doesn't feel right i just it's just one of those cases that common lisp sucks um anyway let's compile this again and now everything's fine hooray 
Okay, so let's look at pool G. Uh, not for occluder output though. We want uh, inst counts. Oh no, not not just any old inst counts though. We want inst counts too. Oh, and we also need to let's do this. So we pull that locally. Um, so we actually want to do this loop for i below 10 collect 1, whoops, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here we go. What a strange thing. It's surprising how long that uh that lasted. Anyway, that's all we need. We're gonna push that to inst counts. Uh what else? No, that's not gonna be pushed to inst counts, that's gonna be pushed to inst counts two. We actually need to do this in a couple of places. Inst counts two, inst counts two, inst counts two. Good. Um Wait a second. Okay, it's just redefinition warnings. That's fine. And now let's call blot again and see what happens. Oh, it didn't like that. Um, okay, dimensions of array differs from that of the data. Yes, and I actually know why I think. That's interesting. Why? Oh no, it's just because I didn't look. I'm missing an extra paren there. Uh, let's get it playing again. Let's go blot. Ooh! GLSL errors. Excellent. This means Vario's got a problem. Argument 1 to atomic add needs to be a buffer variable, shared variable, or pointer. Pointer? Okay. Okay, let's uh, let, let's make some notes here. Let's bring up Scratch quickly. Let's bring that. Put that down there. This is exciting. Um, atomic add. Oh no. Correct syntax. Okay. This is the one it doesn't like. Awesome, that's really exciting. Like a good GLSL error. Okay, so with slots temp dot instance count. That's so interesting. I think I'm gonna have to pull the full, full source and look at this actually because that is not immediately making sense. So occlude pass. Come on, Chris, stop relying on. Oh, fine then. Uh, Matt G. Oh yeah, no, this is going to fail. Matt G. Occlude pass nil. But we can get the source at least, so that's good. Um. Foo. Okay, let's set C mode on for a second so we can get some kind of highlighting. Let's take this down to the bottom because that's where it's going to be most needed. Um, and let's have a think about what we've got going on here. Atomic ad. It is not okay with us just atomically incrementing this thing. Wow, okay. G with slots temp blah 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 is equal to draw call and draw call is equal to this. 
So far, so good. An instance count is that. It is a buffer, right? Let's take this and just take it down the bottom as well. It needs to be a buffer variable. It was completely fine with us indexing into this when it was just uints, but now that it's a struct, it really doesn't like it. That's so weird. Or is it weirder? Let's, let's, let's have a look to see if it's actually jankier than I think it is. Um, this will be one of those things that's just going to make dealing with stuff really hard if this is the case. So, let's give it the full name. So, instance counts. Um, oh no, so count. Oh, we're going to work this out. Okay, so with slots, count rate. That was working. That bit was okay before. But now instead of draw call, we're going to do this. And then instead of this, we're going to go, what's the type? Elements indirect command um, instance count, I think is what it is. Um, instance count of this. Put that there directly. Get rid of this with slots. Compile that. Ugh, right. Then we'll do REPL and we'll do map G. Oh, really? Recur recursive mutex locks? Oh, joy. And an error. Oh, my God. What is going on? Okay, let's bring that back. Let's run blow. Don't you just hate it? Don't you just hate that? Because you know what that means. That means it is completely fine. Oh, God, I really hoped it wouldn't be this. Okay, where's our foo file? It is fine with writing us this. With, uh, with writing us this? I am the English most. Um, what time is it? Jesus Christ, we are not going to get this done today. Um, this is kosher. Um, yeah, let's do, yeah, we can reduce it down to just this. This is not. Okay. So what did we do? In this case, we instance counts array, we stuck it in a variable, and then we shoved it in another variable for which I admit is crappy, but that doesn't matter. That would be um, like compressed away, and then then we did dot instance count and it didn't like it. Oh wait, I'm an idiot. Oh, that's actually a problem. That is a proper bug with... Um, this is a proper bug with Varia. And the reason is, when you assign a struct, everything's copy on value, right? So I guess when it's assigning it to this value here, to this variable here, it's taking a copy, and it's no longer a reference into that... Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, don't write your own compiler, especially when you're not good at writing compilers. Um... Okay, so it's actually got nothing to do with this. This would also be... This would also be a problem. Yeah, you want to keep the struct as a reference, not a copy. Absolutely. Ugh. Well, GLSL semantics are that it isn't a reference. It's just a value copy. I don't have a fix for that right now. 
And I don't know exactly. Are there pointer types in GLSL? No. Or, well, this, this, this makes me very confused. As far as I knew, there were not. Um, I guess this can guess the title of next week's stream. Yeah, so I will be filing a bug immediately after this. I mean, the horrible but useful thing in this case is that um, we do have a workaround. But this is stupid. This is a fundamental vario not respecting the semantics of GLSL thing, and I'm not sure it's going to be an easy fix. And that is really sucky, and I was hoping to avoid this problem for quite a while longer. Because it just really comes down to... Uh, yeah. Anyway. This got fixed. I did fix a few bugs last week. Uh, new issue. Uh, I don't even know what to title that correctly. I'll be able to think clearly after the stream, so I'm going to leave that for now. Um, we're going to get rid of this. We are going to get back to compute foo. And we're just going to have to deal with the fact that this is just going to be long. Um, that is okay. We can keep working with this. That is at least going to work. So, when we run this now, we can see that it is actually populating that correctly. Um, we kind of want to do something different though. We want to go... Um, let's see how we can do this. I think what I want to do now is I want to go with uh, GPU array as C array. Oh, come on. Is, is everything fucked up now? Oh, yeah, it's because I, I haven't typed. Ooh, we're just doubting all things uh, with GPU array as C array. Yes, okay. C array. This is going to get a bit nasty as well. Oh, it's just not nice code. Right. Um, what are we going to be do dealing with here? We are pulling the um, int counts. Um, struct. And it is going to be the int counts to uh, GPU array that we're looking at. Um, which is this. So we're going to bring that down locally. Um, and then we are going to get... Um, oh, fuck. Sorry. Wait one second. Let's have a look at this. Let's actually find out what we're doing. That is a GPU array. We're binding that locally. So this is the ins counts array. Um, then this is the... We're going to get the first element out of that, um, which is the actual struct itself, the ins count to struct. Um, and that has a ins counts to, has an array, ins counts to ARR. So let's go and access that. Um, ins counts to ARR is the array within there, and then we want to get the, um, and I think actually that's the array I want. That's the C array. It's the array that contains all of the uh, draw call information. And then we can pass that to our set, what is it called? Set draw command, passing in that C array. Part, we're gonna say for index zero, and passing in the buffer stream, which I can't remember right now, but it's something to do with the mesh. Um, it's got to be around here somewhere. Maybe it's not. Let's bring this in as well. Mesh. No, it's not here. Cool. Um, we'll just wrap it around here for now. Boop. B stream. And we'll do that instead of this. And let's just see what happens now. A little freak out for a start. Let's see what this is. With GPU array as C array, inst counts array is defined but is never used. Correct. 
because I can't type. There we go. Okay, oh yes, because we haven't specified the instance count, it's being set to 1. So we set that to 0. And we can see now that this is populated. So the bits we could populate locally, we populated locally, and the instance count was populated by the GPU. Okay, we're a little bit further. Now what are we going to do? Now we need to dispatch these draw calls, because the compute shade has written in here. Great. Um, now we actually want to render with this. Let's go back to base. Let's look at roughly what we need to do. I think it was called fart. <laughs> so let's jump there. Let's borrow this. We're going to write all this information in, and then we're going to do another draw call. And this is going to be our multi-map G. We're going to call the fart pipeline, passing in this B stream here. So let's go and wrap this around. Is that the one we're passing in? I don't think that's how that worked, Chris. No, we're not passing in a stream. You're passing in the draw command array. So that's the GPU array um, that contains the draw commands. In that case, have I done this wrong? I think we've got a kind of conflict here between... That kind of sucks. We've got a bit of a conflict between how um, Keppel represents SSBOs, the fact it represents them as a struct that holds... Yeah, as a array of a single struct. Um, and how... Uh, and how indirect wants to be handling it. I think it might just work out for really horrible reasons. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just say fuck it and and use this. No, that's an SSBO. So we need the SSBO data. This is only going to work if it's not checking types properly, because I think memory-wise all the data is laid out as it needs to be, because of reasons. But ugh. but I want something to draw, so fuck it. Um, we're going to go into base, and we are going to disable this, because I don't want to... Oh no, um, what do we want to do? We just don't want to draw stuff. That's all we want to do. <laughs> Stop drawing stuff. Because we're now going to draw stuff using this. Um, and what else do we need to do? We're calling the pipeline. We're setting up the uniforms. And the uniforms are going to be shared by every draw call that is being submitted from here. The length of this is 1, which is just going to work out because of stuff. Um... Yeah, dimensions one. Oh dear. Okay. Fuck it. Let's compile it and see what happens. Um, oh, it doesn't like that at all. Excellent. Um, an odd number of keyword arguments. What does it want? It wants a draw. It wants a pipeline function, which is there. A draw command array. And a stream. That's odd, actually. But fine. Oh yeah, and we're freaking out because we don't know there's a few variables we're missing. Uh, sampler isn't defined, so we need to pass in uh, sampler now. And let's go look at base and see what um, sampler was. I oh, know it was in render, wasn't it? Let's have a look. Sampler was... it was actually passed in. It's just this. This global variable here, so we will use that for now. We're just trying to get something to work. Anything. 
the most hacky version of this. Okay, so... If we go into base now... Oh, it's not going to work, is it? Ah, oh, just dreading this. No. And this is... Oh, what the f fuck? Something is drawing. Something is drawing, and it's drawing weird. Okay. <laughs> what is this? You can see it. You can see it freaking out. Let's just stop generating this stuff. Okay. I can see it flashing at what looks like the right thing, to be honest. Let's get rid of this pull code, because I have no idea what we're meant to be doing there. Um, oh god, this is so bad. So what is going on? I mean, if the data's set up already, let's just um, stop. And let's just say as frame. So yeah, it's normally not working. There is something really, I mean, there is just a nightmare world of hacks going on here. Just wondering why in that case, why is it flickering some of the time? Oh, it's, it's so tantalizing. Um, after five minutes of Googling, this is Zuluina saying, I think uh, can think of a hacky situation that would be to generate a temp function, uh, which takes the object with, uh, given to with slots as its in-out parameter, but then it'll get hairy because you lose lexical context and you'd have to rebuild it totally, yeah. Otherwise, the only thing I think of is to lose semantics of it only evaluating object form uh, to with slots once, e.g. don't let it just expand slot references naively. Well, yeah, one of the things we could do is... Actually, no, not sure what we can do. Um... No, what we could do... Yeah, one thing I'm trying to trying to work out if if we could do um, do we have, there is there is a symbol macro let um, no you can't use that because it would still end up evaluating it a bunch of times. Because I was wondering if we could do a like a with slots uh, for the slot names foo and bar, and then this bit here um, be defined to be whatever the expression is, kind of thing. Da -da -da -da. Uh, but no, that's still going to end up with lots of reevaluation in different places, which is garbage. Um, so it does look like we're going to have to extract the form. Um, yeah. It's not particularly nice. There is going to be a way to hack it together. Um, but I... Yeah, I don't know. We'll get to that. Oh man, so fucking tantalizing. Okay, so... I need to kind of find out what the hell is going on... Um, <laughs> when we're uh, trying to draw this stuff. Um... Yeah, because we have got some really janky stuff going on here. Whoops, play. You can see it, you can see it for a second, just flicker up. And it's odd because I think this is always uh, populated correctly. Like the first one is 
this in all cases. Two one nine six zero, which is the I guess the number of vertices and a thousand, which is the number of instances. And oh man, I was really hoping we'd see some of this drawing today, and it's almost there. But it's flickering. I can see it's the spheres, and I can see the positioned consistently are you getting any of this i'm not sure i can't actually see it on that's really weird actually i can't see it on oh no it flickers up occasionally here did it did it make it show more frequently that's horrifying um is it a timing issue i wouldn't think so So yeah, put a small sleep in there. I'll do it. What the hell? Why not? Let's put a sleep here. Is it just sleep? 0.1. Ah! Oh, I mean, it means that when it does happen, it's happening uh, for longer. I guess. But it's still very infrequent. Okay. Okay. It is almost... Mm. I mean, it could be. It could be that, like, we have no guarantees here about this being finished before this is run. Um, in which case, I mean, we could just take one of these and uh, shove this in here. In which case, it works perfectly. Haha, <laughs> good, good, cool, Zulu. Well done. Of course that's what it is. That's great. All right. So there are a ton of reasons why this shouldn't be working, but it is. Um, so I actually have, there's a lot of tickets, a really useful stuff I've got out of this stream that I need to go fix. Now, now I will tell you why this shouldn't be working and I will explain why it is. So when we call multimap G, this is expecting a GPU array of, let's just bring this up, um, it is not expecting a GPU array of these, it is expecting a GPU array of these, right? We've got 10 of them here. So one of the bugs I knew we were going to run into, and oh yeah, it, like it, so at the moment what Keppel does is it goes, oh, you've passed an array of 10 draw calls i will do 10 draw calls but that's actually really bad because like the length of the array it we like in our case we're not using every draw call yet we, we've got like only the first draw call in the array is the one we're interested in uh, dispatching so that was one bug i've got to fix you've got to be able to override the number of um draw calls from that array you want to use so that was problem number one next is Again, we're meant to be passing in an array of... I can, I can show you what I'm meant to be passing in. Make GPU array. It's stupid when it's easier to make stuff on the GPU than it is to explain something. But whatever. Uh, element type. Doodly doodly. Um, dimensions 10. Right? Ah, I know. I know. I didn't put a quote there. but Cool. It's expecting this. Not this. But the reason it's working is that the memory layout um, of this and this are identical because this is a struct containing an array containing um, 10 of these element indirect commands, the type we need. And so the first element indirect command is in exactly the same place in this and in this. So, oh, sorry, in, in, yeah, in this and in this. So that's working. And like I was saying before, oh, Keppel is stupid. And it, if it was given this, it would actually try and do 10 draw calls. It would try and dispatch 10 draw calls, even though we only want to use the first one. But as luck will have it, the dimensions of this is one. So it only actually dispatches the first draw call. So it's like, there's just like bullshit upon bullshit upon problems upon mistakes upon misunderstandings. But they just lined up so we can have some uh, GPU-based doodle shits. Um, 
Also, one thing I noticed earlier uh, was that if I... And this, this is really dumb, but by flipping this around, we get different um, things being culled. As you can see here, lots of stuff culled. Um, and so this is proving that our compute shader is capable of writing different numbers of instances and putting them in different places. Now, I think the mistake is going to be based on the fact that I copied this code very literally from the DirectX code and it is very likely that their NDC space is different from Jails one. Um, the Z flip for example uh, which is in here somewhere I'm not sure is necessary and things like this so I don't know it feels like it's like this for example I not was it that one no I cannot remember which bit it was, but there was something in here that was like, oh shit, I wonder if that would be... Let's just try and find it right now. If I'm just tweaking stuff, I may as well just tweak stuff. So MIPS, sizes, minzy, saturates. Clip position, what is going on? Max Z clip plus is zero. Okay, let's just do this and see what happens. I am very interested in what the there's this weird this can't work. No, okay, it's not working. That's good. I was gonna say that would have been just too freaky if that was correct anyway so yes in there somewhere is the answer to um why this is fucking up um i need to go through and check everything and that is going to take a lot of time we need to set up a little debugging thing we need to just learn how to debug compute shaders because they're tricky um but we have proven that we are capable oh ooh, that's interesting so even in this case sometimes it will actually kill things very fucked up but yeah, sounds like a job for RenderDoc. Absolutely it does. Um, I love debugging a thing that is supposed to not draw things I can't see. <laughs> exactly. It is going to be... Ugh. But I'm actually really happy because what we wanted to do this week, we got done. Which is the output from the compute shader is now being drawn via indirect rendering. Doesn't matter, all the other stuff is fucked. We found a bunch of bugs and... Now, like after this stream, I'm going to grab a drink and then I am going to file those bugs and uh, yeah, do a bunch of other stuff as well. So, we have some minutes left. I am not going to try and do any more tonight. Um, so, feel free to yell questions at me, ask anything, and I will be here for a little bit longer. Um, let's just. Indirect rendering is working, but it shouldn't be. That's cool. And we I will need to go and do things in Keppel as well. <sighs> I'm really unhappy about exposing those symbols, but oh well, we'll have to do that, deal with that for now. Um, let's have a look. I am not really interested in keeping this type declaration, actually. I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, so we're going to unstage this and do it in a slightly different order. So we will um, add type to um, make C array, add return types to make C array. Um, add helper functions um, for populating for populating what? for populating um, uh, indirect um, 
draw calls. I should give that a better description soon and I'll do that after the stream. That is all right. All right, yeah, let's have a look. Now I'll just animate my mouth on the text. <laughs> yeah, like we haven't got enough problems. Whew. I'm actually surprised that it, that kind of, I'm just really glad we found all those bugs. That's really nice. Um, is there anything else that came up in the last week that's worth... Uh, oh yeah, has anyone watched the Mfiano stream? Because I am interested in what he's up to. Um, also, what bugs did I fix this last week? I did close a couple of things. Oh yeah, the uh, AREF not supporting UN indices. That's pushed. Um, GL Envic... Uh, invocation ID, we bumped into this bug last week, I fixed that and also made better error messages um, for when a variable is not in the current stage you're in, but is defined for other, computers, for other stages um, we had this case where um, we were not correctly putting parens around um, an assignment with a side effect when we're trying to use that side effect so this setf here, we're saying while not, and we've got a setf equals 20. And we can see here that we get equals and then equals equals, and this is just not correct. So we had to fix that. Um, yep, that was sorted. And there was a case we ran into as well where, like the other week, we um, had a case where we were setting a variable um, that was of type, let's say it was type of int, and then we were setting it to a float. Basically, we were trying to change the type of a variable through assignment, which is not allowed in Vario, and it gave us this big ass um, thing, which was confusing because it was the same error in all cases, um, and it should have collapsed them down. And the reason was it was printing the um, type objects rather than type um, designators. So now that's fixed and it just collapses all down to the single error that says, hey, you're trying to set an int with a float and this is the thing that did it. So that is a bit better than it was now. Uh, I don't think we did anything else. No. Nope, I think that's it. Um, I probably fixed a couple of things in Keppel as well, but I can't recall. All right. Um, thank you so much for stopping by. I'll catch you next week when we will be doing... Not sure what we're going to be doing. I'll have to fix these um, bugs, and then we will need to look at the compute shader. Now, the thing is, actually, that's probably worth the last two minutes just thinking about this. I might switch gears next week, depending on how much time I have over the weekend. I think I'm going to end up working all weekend, uh, because I've got some stuff that I really want to get done. Um... And that's going to mean I'm not going to have any time to look into the compute shader stuff which means I'm not sure, realistically, how much we'll be able to fix on stream. So I want to... I might derail next week and we'll do something completely random. And then we'll come back to doing the... Um, what are we doing? Occlusion culling. <laughs> the week after. So, that's my plan. Don't be surprised if you see something different next week. But I will see you then. And uh, thanks for stopping by.